Alright, we'll go to since Super Bowl Hello everyone, you are back on 90.7, the Music FM. Well, my guess, this is the J Red Show, and I got a special guest from the Batavia Daily News, John Anderson. How you doing? I'm doing great. <clears throat> All right. Buffalo Bills, after 17 long years, finally ends the drought. So what are your thoughts on this season? It was, uh, it was special, obviously. It's amazing people weren't even born who can afford season tickets who did not see them in the playoffs. But it was a special year making the playoffs. Um, the only, I think the only bad thing about making the playoffs is it put a band-aid on some of the bigger problems. And I think the biggest problem facing the Bills or any team in the NFL is the quarterback situation. You know, do you go for somebody in the draft or do you go for an experienced player? Or do you stay with what you have? And the Bills have three big options, and uh, you know, I, it's going to be a very interesting offseason for them. I know. I, I think Bills management and Bills fans can agree that even though Tyrod Taylor ended the drought, at the end of the day, he's just simply not the answer for what we have at quarterback. He's average at best. He has trouble, his trouble throwing downfield. He's good with his legs, but it's, he's just a very flawed quarterback. Uh, and I don't know if he's good with his legs. I, I think Blake Bortles is better with his legs, judging what we saw in the playoff game. And the thing about that, you know, the Bills stop Blake Bortles in that game, they win. And that's despite the inept offense. Um, the sad part is the Bills actually prepared for Blake Bortles to run. I know one of the biggest complaints was, oh, they weren't ready. Bortles ran all over them, got those key first downs, kept the offense off the field. Well, I talked to three or four defenders in the locker room after that loss in Jacksonville and they all said the same thing yeah we knew it was coming he's just that good he got away you know they're doing their job and they had a spy on him and he still gained the yard so I think Blake Bortles is a better runner is he a better quarterback than Tyrod Taylor probably not um but you're right he he is average um he did make a lot of progress as a football player and as a leader this year I will give him that I was I wrote him off the year before because when I covered the team and Jim Kelly was there, he owned that locker room. Those guys wanted to go to his house after the games. Um, that was a big thing. You know, we're going to gyms. Um, he owned the locker room. He was the leader. He was the quarterback. Everyone followed him. They would run through a wall for him. He was very engaging, talked to all the guys, knew their families. You go in the Bills locker room, and I know it's the day and age of, you know, players with the with the um, beats on and stuff, but he would be in front of his locker, dressed to the nines, um, with some headphones in, uh, earbuds in, looking down at his phone, wouldn't say a word to anybody, waited for his mandatory 15 minutes to be in the locker room, and he'd leave. You know, and he obviously speaks to the podium, and nice guy, but not a leader of men. And uh, I think a lot of that changed a little bit this year, but I want a guy who's going to step up and be a leader. You know what I mean? And um, Peterman, I wouldn't give up on that guy. I mean, have you seen the list of how many quarterbacks have thrown for six and five interceptions in a game? It's like a Hall of Fame list. You know, based on what this guy's done in college, this guy has overcome so much adversity. Uh, keep him as a backup and see what happens. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, yes, it was a mistake for the Bills to throw to throw him in the Chargers game, but that's but he's definitely I've definitely liked what I've seen from him. He could. He could be the guy, but, I'll, but I also want to keep the, the. I also want the Bills to keep an eye on the college prospects. Either get Baker Mayfield or Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen or Josh Rosen. Which of these quarterbacks have impressed you? Uh, you know what? A, a lot of them have. Uh, obviously, Mayfield is, is the big, you know, so-called question mark. But then again, so is Cam Newton. Um, it, it's it's going to be tough, you know, because I think they might be in a situation like with Deshaun Watson. You know, you may give the team to a Peterman for a few weeks, and then a rookie's going to take it over. Uh, but then again, you have a playoff team. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just cleaned house, grabbed one of the veterans on the market, and then uh, drafted one or two good quarterbacks and let them fight it out and see what happens. It's, it's kind of ex it's exciting, but that Peterman game, um, you know, everyone points to that and jokes about it. Look, Tyrod Taylor, you're not going to win that game. And I think Tyrod loses the team if he plays that game, and they lose all hope in the season. The Bills knew they were going to lose that game. So when they had Peterman play quarterback and they lost, 
everyone could say, well, it's because of Peterman. Tyrod comes back against the weak sisters of the poor, wins some games, they make the playoffs. Um, I thought it was a brilliant coaching decision. I think that decision was based more on uh, the confidence of Tyrod Taylor and putting confidence in the team than it was on you know Peterman. I think he was just a sacrificial lamb that game. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with the decision. I think Sean McDermott is doing a heck of a job. I talked to Thurman Thomas about him, and he just said, hey, we're getting back to players of character. And he said this before Marcel Darius was dealt. Um, Thurman was telling me this. He's, he pretty much told me, watch out, you know. He, he, and he did bring up Marcel, that if this guy doesn't clean up, he's going to be gone. And he was. Um, it's just great to see a guy like McDermott uh, bring in guys of character who can play the game. And that's what Marv Levy did with this Bills team. He passed on a lot of good football players because they weren't guys of character uh, that other teams took. So, I mean, the Michael Vick situation, the Bills could have had him. They just didn't want to deal with it. And uh, over the recent years, they've just been signing anybody. So I think... It's changing. You're seeing better people and better football players. You don't want to rely on bad people to have good things happen. And so the Bills, I think, are you know, really turning the, uh, turning the table on that. Absolutely. The Bills cut on making bad hires and bad quarterback play, and that's why they went 17 years without playoffs. Unfortunately, I tuned in WGR, and, and a lot of people seem to think that Tom Brady and the Patriots are the reason for the drought. I mean, yes, they make it tough. Playing the greatest of all time twice a year, but that's just no excuse for the incompetence of the one Bills drive. I finally like what I see from this new Bills management. Yeah, I, I agree. They're they're doing a good job, and I think uh, Terry and Kim Pagula are you know kind of hands off. They're letting the football people run it. Um, they did that with Doug Whaley. It, it, you know, it, 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 I'm sorry, you know, it didn't work out, um, and they got rid of them. It, it's you know, it stinks when you've been through this drought and you have to watch all this experimenting happen all over again, another new owner, another new coach, another new coach, but another new GM. But at least it's, you know, it's all, it's all happening for the positive now. It looks like they're getting all the pieces together. They've got assistant coaches who want to come to Buffalo. They've got great assistant coaches who are getting head coaching jobs and interviews. So things are back the way they used to be in that regard with the front office. And, uh, yeah, again, the, the Pagulas are very good, down-to-earth people. Uh, they get it. They get this area. Uh, you know, Terry, you know, local uh, pickleball and uh, racquetball player at the YMCA's. Uh, he knows so many people in this area. He was, you know, hires people from this area. Um, Kim went to high school in this area. She went to college at Houghton. Uh, her dad was a superintendent in the area. They get this area. They get Buffalo. It's it's a it's such a great fit for Buffalo to have the Pagulas owning this team. They know what the people are about. And as you're reading some of these things on like the Players Tribune, how the guys didn't want to come here, like Aaron Williams, how he embraced Buffalo. Um, the players, Lashawn McCoy, I never thought he would fall in love with Buffalo. Jim Kelly was the same way. Yes, yeah, Jim Kelly. I mean, played in Florida from Pittsburgh. Why would he stay in Buffalo? He's still here. It's such a you know, it's an amazing mindset and change. I'll tell you someone who I knew was gone from the day he was signed, Marshawn Lynch. He'd never been to Buffalo. He didn't want to be here. His mom was upset that he got drafted by the Bills. I remember listening to his first interview thinking, he ain't staying. And I saw him at Fisher at training camp, and he just did not look happy. And I don't think they used him correctly. Um, you know, gets to New Orleans and has a blast. And, you know, Oakland, having a good time. He just... You know, I don't know if you blame Lynch or blame the atmosphere and blame the leadership. Using him like they could have. The Bills had a lot of great, great running backs throughout the drought: McGahey, Spiller, Lynch. But they, but as they, as stated, they could never get over that hump. They just, just they all they had some good talent, but they never could. They never kept them. Like we look at players like Jarris Bird, Andy Lavitri, Pat Williams. The list goes on and on and on of people just walk up the door, and that, and that that's probably, in my opinion, is the biggest reason for the drought. And that stops when Terry Pagula took over the team. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a that's a great point because you're talking about great running backs who played with average or slightly above average quarterbacks, and they couldn't win. And now you've got you know McCoy with the average to below average quarterback, and they won. You know it's it is what it is. Let's talk about the New England Patriots. That there have been some rumors of the turmoil in the Patriot locker room that 
Brady supposedly traded Garoppolo and uh, that some pretty supposedly forced um, Robert Kraft to trade Garoppolo. So do you believe these stories, or do you think it's just ESPN make up stories? Or what do you think? What's the take on this? All of it's true. <laughs> the the the, uh, the stories by ESPN are true, and the uh, rebuttals by um, Belichick and Tom Brady are true. It's all true. It's life. It's drama. It's it happens. I mean, all of it makes sense. You know, is it malicious? No, it's business and it's sports. It happens, yes. And I and I kind of get a kick out of what a big deal that some people are making about this on the national scene. But, you know, Tom Brady's doing what's best for him and best for the team. So is Belichick. They're not going to do anything crazy. And look what happened. They came within a fraction of winning the Super Bowl. I mean, that play Tom Brady made, I, I was just in awe of him that whole game. I mean, I... I what a fan I became of this guy, uh, you know. I got to watch the Super Bowl as a fan, and that last play, the way he spun out of it, knew where he was throwing, I mean, incomplete or not, what what an amazing Super Bowl, what an amazing performance by the Patriots and, of course, the Eagles. But, you know, I think they, they know what they're doing, and they have a way, and if you don't fit in, you're gone. And it worked out great for Garoppolo, I mean, the highest-paid quarterback now in the NFL. I, I think there's a lot that goes on. There's a lot of, look at Look at uh, Hernandez. He's in jail for murder. I mean, they've had some... Hernandez is, is dead. He, he committed suicide. Well, that too. So both of them are gone. I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, what I'm saying is they had a guy, a starting tight end. Next thing you know, he's in jail. Uh, you got Gronk who gets in, you know, has his suspension. They they deal with so many crazy personalities and crazy things, and yet they still win. And it's just, it's an amazing thing to watch. And... They are okay with each other. I've um, Julian Edelman and Brady. I have a great video of those two joking around, and um, it's just they're they're down to earth guys. They're they're really good guys, and uh, I know people hate them, but Tom Brady is seriously a genuine. He's a good human being. Edelman's a great guy. Uh, they're all you know they're they're the type of people that you'd want to root for, but it's impossible for people around here to root for the Patriots. But at the end of the day, I think they're just normal people making normal decisions like any business would. And, you know, their dirty laundry kind of got aired a little bit. But what's, how is that any different than a major corporation laying off 200 employees or firing a CEO or a president or a manager? It's, you know, it's, it's all the same to me. So, yeah, is it true? Yeah, it's all true. That's why I meant by that. It's all true, man. The way what they said and what ESPN said, it's all true. It's there. But, obviously, the Patriots didn't let it affect them. I think any other team in the NFL would have never made the Super Bowl and almost won. Absolutely. Five, 500, 500 yards. It doesn't look like the Brady-Belichick era is going to end anytime soon. Love Brady, hate Brady. you got to respect him. But a lot of people do not respect Brady because of, a lot of, because of Spygate, because of Deflategate. A lot of people say, well, he's the quarterback that was picked in the sixth round. He was not a highly touted prospect, yet here he is engineering one of the greatest runs in sports history. I personally have a lot of respect for Brady. I mean, I, I mean, as a Bills fan and a Patriot hater, I can't wait for the Brady-Belichick era to end and for the Bills to have the fr- franchise quarterback. But I do have a lot of respect for Tom Brady. He is a lot of fun to watch. And, I mean... Quite crazy. 500 yards. New England has to fix the defense because if, if someone told me that Brady put up 500 yards in the Super Bowl, I would be like, there would be no way they lose that. So, But it was a fun Super Bowl to watch. Definitely one of the best Super Bowls ever. It was Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia is the next dynasty. Carson Wentz, um, Nick Foles. It, they lose Carson Wentz, they get Nick Foles, and they still win the Super Bowl. Their, their future is bright. I agree. Uh, 